Beware, this podcast is not a news or journalistic source for information. This is for entertainment purposes only, with solid viewpoints from two guys that are brutally honest about the things that you all are too scared to say or discuss. Please like and subscribe to our page for more engaging content. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wits End Podcast. I am your host, Devin Witt, alongside my dad, Joe The Show. And uh, today we got two really great topics that we wanted to share with you guys. I uh, don't know how much you pay attention to the news here lately, but there was a huge derailment in East Palestine, Ohio uh, on February 3rd. So this has been about two weeks ago now. Uh, with that, very little news coverage about this and the results of this derailment and the toxic chemicals that were spilled into the air uh, have been quoted as being Chernobyl-like effects uh, for this part of Ohio. So, yeah, I mean, there's up. a lot of toxic chemicals. Well, I say toxic, toxic chemicals, vinyl chloride that was released out there, and then they're saying, you know, it's it's uh, safe now. Well, what's weird about the vinyl chloride is that's actually one of the substances that they used in chemical warfare in World War One, and they're trying to say that this air is safe. Well, I don't, I, I don't know that it was used in there or not. I know it's, you know, polyvinyl chloride is what they make for PV. That's why it's called PVC pipe. Mm -hmm. um, either way, it's, it's, it's toxic, you know, to some capacity to whatever it is. But so either way, this stuff is spilt out there, and then they're out for a couple of days. They're saying, oh yeah, you can come back home, and it's all safe. Um, I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, I think it's just like a lot of things are covering. Um, now I say covering their tracks. That sounds really bad, especially we're talking about deer <laughs> on the train. Oh um, but I think they're covering their butts or, you know, another way is just trying to make them appear a facade. That'd be better. Is make them appear something's not bad when really it is. Um, I think that's what's happening to some level in this stuff. Well, for me, one of the telltale signs was at an initial town hall meeting. Uh, the mayor there had held like a special meeting or whatever, and they actually... <clears throat> ended up kicking out one of the reporters who was trying to do live coverage of the event and they said that he was being obnoxious or whatever so they kicked him out which is insane to me because you know here you have a guy trying to do his job and report the news to the people and the government stepping in and stopping him yeah it depends what they mean by obnoxious i mean some some reporters some people are i mean if they put me in a room and i'm like drilling you know, a, a new event drilling for questions and I want answers. Yeah. I could probably be the same way. I'd probably get kicked out too. I mean, if you're trying to, yeah, do your job, especially if you're passionate about it I and mean, you're going to be drilling that person, especially for answers. I mean, I can't, I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't see it, but I see several press conferences like with the president, you know, and they dodge stuff, you know, I'm like, yeah. so if he was really trying to pin them down and get those answers, no, I mean, I could see it be considered, a, you know, being a butt or obnoxious or whatever word you want to put there. So, yeah, I mean, I could see it. So, uh, you know, just to kind of give people a little bit more context, uh, there was 38 cars that derailed, uh, a fire ensued, and that damaged another 12 cars. Uh, so there was 20 of those cars carrying hazardous materials that were labeled non-hazardous, which is something we can get into here in a little bit. And 11 of those toxic chemicals, like the, the train cars, spilled over. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, they decided that it was safer to do a controlled release of the vinyl chloride into the atmosphere rather than hope that it doesn't explode and blow up the right. town. Um, but in the process, you know, they just spilled all these chemical, toxic chemicals into the air and people yeah. are having adverse effects from it. Yeah, I mean, there, there's been some people that said they have, the, you know, there's a list of side effects. You know, you have to kind of, not to discredit anything there, but you have to kind of wonder, is it really a side effect or because they said, Oh, here's the list of side effects. So people, if it's basically it's all in their head, um, either way, this stuff's out there. You know, I, I just still, you know, we could, you could skirt around this and say, you know, they're saying, Oh, it's, it's, you know, it's okay. It's safe. It's, it's, they don't know that, you know, there's just, there's just no way. And people would try to debunk this. Well, they can test this. They can test this. Well, here's, here's my test. One, I don't trust the government. And there's a clown on here that's saying, you know, that's what we need to do. We need to sit back and trust the government. No, 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 we don't. Because here's what has been. Here's some of little pieces of facts. Downstream, there's several thousands of fish that's dead. That's proven. Yep. And then they're saying, oh, this is not going to contaminate our water. 
Really? That's to me. It's it's common sense. Now I understand you can treat things and you can do you know you can do things to treat them. But yeah, what do you have to put in there? I mean, the bottom line of this this crap is in there. If I if I put you know nuclear waste in the water and said, oh well, I'm going to treat it and then you can drink it, people would be like, no. You know, if that's the case, put the president of the United States downstream. Let him drink it. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying that because if it's so dang safe, then these people that's saying it, let them let them drink it. Let them suffer the consequences possibly of something that's going to happen 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now because that incident, it may not happen right away. It's long-term effects. Well, uh, you know, it's funny you kind of bring up trusting the government. So the EPA, which is supposed to step in and test the water and stuff like that to make sure it is legit enough to drink. Right. Uh, they actually got their samples for their testing from the company that caused the spillage. So tell me that's not a conflict of interest. And rather than testing it themselves, they just went with what they were told, which is, oh, the water's good. People can come back home. Yeah. Uh, despite all of the test samples that they used were contaminated uh, or could not be used to actually verify. So that's one level of the government corruption that doesn't really get talked about enough is this misdirection of companies being able to kind of cover up their messes by using politicians as their kind of scapegoat of, mm -hmm. hey, just say what this press release says and you know here's your yeah, donation I mean, there's no way that factually you or i would know that because we're not there you know but yeah you know, i could see there's a conflict there if in fact that they're saying hey this it did come from the same people that caused a spill i mean that's kind of definitely it's, it's not a conflict of interest that's the uh, that's well, i guess it would be i mean yeah. yeah i mean they shouldn't be the epa should be doing their own samples anyway and and if in fact they are getting their samples from this company, that would almost indicate to me there's just something inside they're trying to cover, exactly um, stuff like that. And in this case, it'd probably be a big lawsuit um, because there's been a lot of stuff, you know. And what's disgusting to me out of all this stuff, and everybody thinks I'm a, this is a, I'm a Trump fan. That's not the case. Is all the attention on this stuff has diverted back to Trump again because he didn't pass a law that would allow them to have a specific type of breaks on these things. However, they, it's a, to me, it's a diversion. And the reason I say that is because there's been some experts involved in this and the experts are saying like, you know, yeah, that law or, you know, yeah, he did in fact debunk that or not debunk it, but didn't pass. Yeah. Deregulate. Whatever. Um, but would they also come back and said that like it written this situation, it wouldn't have mattered. Well, okay, so a couple <clears throat> things to that. So before Trump, it was Obama, and Obama is the one that started it all. So rather than following the National Transportation Safety Board's instructions on how they need to be careful with this toxic chemicals whenever they're transporting them by rail, they decided to take the corporate money mm -hmm. and deregulate and not require them to call this hazardous chemicals or non-flammable, which right. is the craziest part because when you watch that video – how is that non-flammable? Uh, and then kind of next to that, so then you have Trump who comes in. You know, Obviously, he doesn't make anything better, but now here we are with Biden, and he's doing the same thing. And mm -hmm. the fact that it took them over 10 days to show up to this town and show any kind of support is downright atrocious. And that right. shows you everything you need to know about politics. Yeah, I mean, there's... I Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's sad, but I'm not surprised. I mean... You know, this stuff happens. I don't even know that. Hmm. I would even say probably the government probably wouldn't even got to evolve, involved unless the publicity, which this one did, he got the publicity. So I think that they're forced at that point to get involved. Um, whether how many ever days it is down the road, because I look at it, if the government cared, you know, that would have been not, and not, and not even necessarily a faster response. I, I'm not going to say that, but you know, the, the, the aid, the however they're going to help behind that, you know, I could care less if they're there because to some degree, if the government's involved, it's going to be more. Of, it's going to be more of a show than than what it's worth. So having them there is not always a good thing. Um, you know, in this case, you know, the president can sit there and say, "Well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that." You know, I'd believe it when I see it. You know, because we have so many empty promises, and not just from Biden. It's it's from all it's from all presidents, as far as I'm concerned. You know, they say these things and they never deliver. It's it's all PR crap. Okay, well, one of the other things, too, that I guess kind of bother me in a situation like this is that this isn't the first time that train derailments happen all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of scary that people are okay with just writing it off as like, oh, well, there's 1,100 
train derailments on average per year. Well, the right. problem of it is these are carrying toxic chemicals near our cities and towns. And so in the same week that this happens, another one derailed in Houston, which was also carrying uh, hazardous or non-flammable uh, chemical materials. And then there was also another cargo train containing hazardous materials that got derailed in near Detroit. And so the, the point of it is, is that you have a, a clear problem with the railway industry spending money on buying back stocks rather than improving their old outdated system that was created in the 1800s, despite recommendations, even though they could still be extremely profitable. And that's what needs to stop. Well, I mean, it's the same thing our government's doing to our infrastructure, because that's what it is. A railroad is an infrastructure. Yeah. Um, whether it be, you know, government ran or a private entity ran, the government don't take care of our infrastructure. This is no different. You know, and the thing of it is, if you look at the railroad specifically, they are unionized like crazy. You know, and I would say that, you know, I say bigger or smaller than some other union, but they are more recognized um, and very well paid from, from my understanding. Um, so there shouldn't be, a, you know, that, well, it's part of, it probably is part of the reason. I mean, I could get on. That's not the point here about unionizing and where the funds are going, all this other stuff. But the bottom line of it is, you know, they should be responsible for it. They should be taking care of their infrastructure. If they bought that river, you know, this stuff would, you know, could probably not completely stop. Um, but you're right. I think it could be reduced because you said there's what, 1200 annually. And, you know, I did a little bit more digging on that and you may have too. Um, there's, I think they're, let me go through yeah, the derail damage, 6,600 tanks carrying hazard, hazardous materials off of all those. And out of this, there was 348 that released their contents of hazardous stuff. So there's 348. Now, that's not just with these couple of accidents. This is this is an overall, this is right. an overall number um, reported from the FRA. Um, over $930 million in damage. That, that's a lot. Uh, well, okay, so here's my thing. You know, just to kind of go back to the stock buyback, because I, I did write this down. So they spent $191 billion on stock buybacks and shareholder dividends between 2011 and 2021, which is $60, mil, 60 billion more than the firm spent on capital investments in the same time period. Tell me your priorities aren't straight when you're buying back stock to raise the price so that you can make more money as an executive rather than investing in your business. Well, the, th the thing that... <clears throat> That's really unique, and it's not so much in you know 2011, um, but as you start fast forwarding down the road, and I know this is not directly going off what you're saying, but we really relied on railroads, to my understanding, a lot more because of COVID. Yeah, um, yeah, because they with, cut off all the or all the regular people that were doing it. Yeah, and 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 again, I could sit here and, and dispute whether this is a government, you know. Um, how much the government's involved in the in the COVID thing or not? It's irrelevant, I guess. Well, no, it's not irrelevant because if the government is behind it. It would stand to reason that they have more to gain from going to this type of system. But regardless, so I think more over the last say four years, the railroad this this thing has become more of a prominent you know um, means of transporting goods and you know stuff like that and hazardous materials, and so people can kind of understand that. You know, the hazardous materials is a big deal, but it, it has been a lot more um, uh, taken better by doing them by train versus by truck. Yeah, which I, I'm sure it is safer in some ways. But on the other hand, it's because you have to follow good safety regulations. Mm -hmm. You know, if the government is saying, hey, there's no rules, just transport this how you want or very minimal rules, like trying to say that something isn't flammable when it definitely is that's when you run into problems like this where they can get away with a hundred million dollars in damage plus i'm sure this is going to be way more than that it's well, going to have long lasting effects there's there's a lot of truth there's a bigger truth to this and it's a bigger issue than what i think what people realize and and think about the truck driving down the road and talking semis hauling stuff they have to have placards stuff like that as do trains the thing of it is they have state cops local co any of those cops can pull them over they can check that stuff especially state cops you know, weights, what they're carrying, they got all their materials, they got all this. You, you, you're not pulling over choo-choo trains. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. This is not, you know, it's like, come yeah. on. And I'm, I say that jokingly, yes, obviously. But, like, what I'm saying is, is what's the, what's the guidelines? What's the, uh, 
checks and balances there. You know what? They leave the yard and they have, supposedly have the placards on them and they get to their destination. There's no, no checks in between or possibly getting, so there's nothing to keep up. There's no checks and balances. There's no accountability um, in, in this. I mean, there is to some level, but not like we do with the trucks. Well, don't. my, my response to that would be look at, that's what happens whenever you cut 30% of your workforce and expect the railways to be ran correctly without any problems. Mm -hmm. Clearly there needs to be more people on each one of these trains to be checking on it, to make sure, especially if you're carrying 50, a hundred, 150 rail cars, there's no way that two guys can handle that effectively long term. No. but it's a profit model for the railway companies to cut down their workforce. So they have to pay less people and they make more money that way. Right. So from a business perspective, it makes sense until you start looking at the humanity aspect of it. These people can't even get paid sick days off. You know, yeah, they got a little bit more money, but what does that matter if you can't spend it with your family? No, you buy enough drugs. You just keep yourself awake. I'm sure they do. That's what you do. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying <laughs> that's what they do. It's like, oh, let's go buy meth because we get paid more so we can stay awake longer, cocaine or whatever. I, no, I'm not implying or saying that's what they do, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's a mess. You know, and you're right. There's several that's derailed. And, and trains being derailed is actually kind of a common thing. It's just, just something that the publicity has got. It's publicity, and, it, and it's a bad situation. I'm not trying to take light of that because of the crap that's getting released um, in, in – in the atmosphere and what, what you'll see from this is, and there'll be some clown coming on here after, you know, people are sick or whatever. And they're past that. Then it's going to be like, well, that thing started causing the ice to melt again. Yeah. You yeah. Know, environmental now, change. You now we're going to have a flooding and you know, the, the weather climate, the shift weather shift and all this other stuff, you know? Well, I, I do think you're exactly right. in the fact that major media isn't going to give this the proper coverage that it deserves. And the reason for that is because they're owned by the same people that own the company that caused all this to happen. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the scariest part and why you don't see mainstream media, whether it's Fox, CNBC, CNN, whatever, you know, all those news stations, they don't want to cover this because that's where all their ad dollars come from is from these people. And so to kind of take a step back, the, I know a lot of people want to say like, oh, Fox is kind of out there on its own. That doesn't mean that they're reporting true facts about what's going on. I mean, mm -hmm. if we think as a society at this point that any news company is out there with doing out of the goodness of their heart, that's mainstream like that on national television, you're fooling yourself. Well, I mean, reporting the news is, is difficult because you've got to decipher, you know, is this, you know, when you're getting the news, unless you're getting it from the source. You know, if you're interviewing somebody, you, that's secondhand information, bottom line. That's somebody's account, eyewitness, you know, whatever. And the thing of it is, you know, that's what you're relaying to people, and it comes across as facts, you know. And, and so things can get skewed. And I think that there's good reporters that, you know, they do the best they can, um, but it comes across wrong. They, they tell it wrong, Um because it's really, it's one of those things. It's like you do when you're a kid, you know, you, there's 10 people, you say something and, and it goes down the line is how much does it change where it gets that 10th person. Well, that's the same thing. You know, they tell you something and how does that get delivered to, to your audience? And then, or if it goes from two or three people to that audience. So, well, I, I, mean, I will hard. say there's a ton of good independent journalists out there that I think the world is kind of starting to catch on to. Mm -hmm. uh, people kind of like breaking points is one of my favorite ones just because they want to give you you know, kind of like a both-sided opinion, but also giving you facts about what's actually going on unbiased, meaning if it was Donald Trump involved or if it was Joe Biden, they're going to let you know on both sides what happened. And mm -hmm. that's what it takes to kind of get out of this cycle of being uh, turned violent, you know, mm -hmm. on almost a daily basis. Because anybody watches the news, depending on which one you're watching, you're upset with the other side. Well, you need that's both sides, you know, in, in a lot of these things, because both sides is what helps you determine who you're going to elect for whatever seat, Congress, Senate, you know, House, President, you know, you name mayor. I mean, all these things. You need both sides to to gauge these things correctly um, when it comes to those. But just on on what what do you stand for? What are you what are you fighting for every day? What do you you know? And and because if people would really listen to the news and they started understanding um, these things, and, I, and I'm not making a, a uh, the podcast about that today, the school shootings is one of them. You know, I, I, yeah, I know it happens, you know, it's a big deal. But once I started digging in it and looking at it, I was like, Oh my gosh, this is freaking way bigger of a problem than what I thought, 
you know? So, so I'm saying that to say this, you know, once people want they're educated in it and they're actually being involved in it, you'll see some of these issues are bigger than what you expected. And, and other ones, you will find out the opposite. You'll find out that it's the media blowing it up and it's not as big as damn deals. What people's making it out to be. Yeah. You know, like one of the things that really upset me, I was on Twitter earlier today and I saw my Senator Marjorie Taylor green or whatever, uh, but she got on there and she was saying that she thinks that Republican and Democrat states should be separated. So we no longer have to deal with woke ideology and all this and all that. And it was extremely upsetting because it's like here you have a uh, person in a position of power and authority openly advocating for the splitting up of our great nation. And to me, that's what politics <clears throat> is all about today is how do we divide people and conquer them rather than bring everyone together? Because mm. you can't tell me that there's any yeah, but benefit. See, you say that so nicely. I don't say it quite like that. I say it quite like this. You want segregation. You're trying to pull us back a hundred years. No, yeah, no, that's true. That's no. what it is. You don't want, you know, when years ago is obviously, and I guess some of the Greeks still argue that too, blacks and whites separate, segregated. You don't mingle. Well, it's the same thing. Yeah. Except now it's Republican Democrat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Political party. Yeah. Yeah. Which can be the exact same thing in my, in my viewpoint today. Uh, I think there's too many rational people in the middle and then you just have idiots on both sides of the aisle mm -hmm. that are extremists and they make everyone else look bad. Well, it's a good thing about America. I mean, people, you know, whether we, we don't have to agree on things, um, you know, and, and I've said it before, there's things I agree both sides, Democrat and Republican, um, you know, and so s segregating people um, to society is actually not a good thing. You know, even even if it was possible and there was no backlash from from that segregation side, where you say, okay, you're Democrat, you live here, you're Republican, you live here. It's not very hard to prove that concept when you put a bunch of like minded individuals together. Not even that, you put a bunch of individuals together. You know, th th there's problems. Well, that's why they're worried about social media and censoring people on there because you can spread Nazism or mm -hmm. whatever, and that's. To me, that's kind of an issue, honestly, because I think the reality of it is if you're the type of person that wants to be a Nazi, you are going to be a Nazi regardless of whether you're on social media. All right. it did was speed it up. Well, the problem with those the problem with those arguments, again, with the segregation side, I mean, it's it's so – I don't even know why people would say that or why they did Because when you start segregating people and putting them in these bubbles, you're going to have people that says, I'm this, when they're really not. You know, and, and the Democrats, Republicans, either way, I'd pick on the Democrats on this one. We have a lot of a younger generation. Well, I'm Democrat. I don't believe in this. I don't believe in this. And until those things start getting put up on them and those laws start getting put up on them, they start seeing the consequences of it. Then they're like, oh, my gosh, you know, this is not basically what I signed up for. Well, yeah, because you didn't. It's not because you're not a Democrat or Republican. It's because you didn't understand what you were voting for. Yeah. yeah. You didn't do what your due diligence, up. Yeah, you know, or, or whatever, you know, cause the big one, just an example of that is, well, let's give everybody, you know, a certain amount of money per month. You know, I've got a problem with that. It sounds good. And you're going to get a lot of young, ignorant voters. And I said that correctly, young, ignorant, they're ill-informed, Ill not informed voters to vote for stuff like that. The problem with it is on, even on a simple level, government has control because anytime and i've said this before they can come in and cut those funds like that and you're at the mercy of the government so you'll do what they say to get that check every month so there's there's a problem with that amongst many other things it's just an example it is a form of compliance people don't think about that they don't investigate it enough yeah well it's because you're thinking about like whenever your bills are, are stacking up month after month and you're finally given a, a handout per se you know most people are just living in that moment you know they can't think about bettering themselves or getting out of that position and putting themselves mm -hmm. in actually really good spot in life. They're more so focused on, you know, how do I get this newest well, trend or, or whatever. That's the thing. That's what's happening in the country right now with our second amendment rights and our firearms. People are, you know, people that there, there's a sect of people out there that's against the second amendment, right? Saying, no, I'm not supporting this. We need to take their guns. You know why? Cause it doesn't affect them. It's like, they don't care one way or the other. Now I understand that position, but here's my problem with that position. If you let the government come in and strip our Second Amendment rights that you don't give a crap about, what are you going to do when they try to strip other rights that you do care about? Because, see, the problem, that's why you support the Second Amendment. It's not because you're a gun lover. Not because you think you need a million guns or one gun. You support it because once you give the government that much traction to take away that part of our, our rights, there's nothing to stop them from taking something else that you may value. 
as far as your rights. The Patriot Act. So you stand behind these things and you keep the government in check. And that, that's why I, th- I believe people should be educated. It's like, what does this do long term? Not right now. Well, and uh, but then you also have to think about the other half of this. So even as an individual, even if you're super educated and uh, everything else, those aren't the people that get put into office. It's idiots that get, you know, bamboozled by corporate lobbyists. And so even though you have a lot of people that have great ideas that could revolutionize this country, they don't make it into the office. And so they can never create that real change. Instead, we're just seeing a bunch of old guys at this point running the show and they have been for a very long time. I think there's people that got in the office by other means. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying, I don't think it's all about money. Uh, well, you know, it's ultimately power, but where does that stem from? Usually money. You know, if you don't have the money, then you can't really get the power. That's why you go to the island and uh, you yeah. come back an elected official. Uh, yeah, and also some very bad photos of you. Yeah, blackmail. But he's dead now. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Supposedly. Yeah. Oh, snap. Supposedly. Just like Tupac. No. Yeah, you uh, never know. Okay, so, you know, the next thing I kind of wanted to get into, because this really interested me. Look, I'm a UFO alien nut, and I I love to see stuff like this because I'm like, what if, you know? And whenever I heard that the U.S. had shot down three UFOs, I took it as that. These guys shot some aliens. Well, what's sad about it is, when I say sad, bad, whatever, the government's not denying it. In a way, yeah, they're really not. Now, they did finally come out and say, these are not aliens. But even then, when you say that and you have no corroborating evidence, it's like, really? What are you saying? Well, see, that's the thing. You know, they were real quick to say, this is a Chinese spy balloon. No, 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 it's not. It's a, you know, it's a weather. No, it's not. It is a spy balloon. And people are going, no, it's a weather balloon. No, it's not. It's. I mean, they were like quick to, to, this is a spy balloon. But this are like, well, it crashed over the Yukon. We don't have a way to get. We don't have a way to get it out. I'm like, really? You know how many times I've seen helicopters flown, you know, for military, flown into crap. They can put them in a in a war zone. Now I can understand if meaning this, this storm blowing ninety to nothing, man. It's you know white out. You can't see. Might like, get that, but like you, we've had time to get in there. And You're get the government. Out. Like we're not sophisticated enough to put a helicopter down in trees. Well, like, that's I, I, bad. I mean, come on, man. Uh, so it's like, you know, we've shot this crap down. And you think that I'm ignorant enough to believe that your pilots don't have some type of footage of this? This is 2023. You're telling me they don't have some type of footage, camera footage on those planes? Come on. Bull, bull. This and hurt. if they show the footage, it's going to be, oh, crap, those are UFOs. You know, Possibly. That, you know, because the, based on the pilots, what they were talking about, they were saying that, hey, this is an octagonal shaped object with like tentacles protruding from it. That right. doesn't sound like any kind of weather balloon I've ever heard of. You know, so like I, I have no choice here but to believe that we're actually dealing with aliens because, I mean, let's be real here. Roswell, New Mexico. It all started there. You know, the covering stuff up like that and how ironic you know that they can find this chinese spy balloon in just a few hours but they over several days can't find any of these objects Mm -hmm. that ain't right that's so fishy to me because you're the united states government you spend more money on gathering intelligence you know military spending all that and you're trying to tell me you can't locate balloons that are from either corporate or private entities and how can they locate them or not I, to me, I still go back. You got to go to the basics. I mean, f- tracking them down, all this other stuff, I get that because they are in Canadian airspace, Canadian land, on some of it, not all of it. Yeah, one of them. Uh, but I'm telling you, man, with with being where we're at with technology, I'm telling you, there is clo- there's footage of this. There has to be. Yes. Well, and here's another thing. And the thing of it is, unless I'm missing it, and I could be completely wrong, but, you know, they're not even on the actual weather balloon or the spy balloon, whatever you want to call it. There was actually, they released the radar foot or, you know, the footage of it. I haven't seen that in this situation. Now, I've seen some stupid, you know, what I would say people trying to, to mimic it, but I yeah. haven't seen anything. So that, to me, there's a little bit, why were they so eager to do that before, but they're not now? You know, um, I seen a lot of tracking from these situations. I've seen very little that I have seen some, um, but not, not like it was before. And so... Yeah, I mean, it's it's questionable. I've told you my opinion on that before. Do I necessarily believe it? No, but I don't completely rule it out. Um, but this one is very compelling. And at this point where it's at, the only way they're going to be able to completely rule out to the American people 
because they haven't been transparent is the only way they're going to rule out that it's not UFOs. Is they're going to have to come out with some evidence saying, no, oh, here it was. Here's it was a, you know, this is what it was. But they can't because they gave up on the search. And, and uh, one of the Pentagon officials ended up actually saying, he's like, hey, we may never know what happened. And that all of that combined. And then I saw some videos. I don't know if they were real, no. but they were showing what appeared to be UFOs on the back of these trailers being hauled and i heard someone say well oh it was like a corn silo whatever that goes on the top here's the thing that's to me that's gonna nah. get debunked real fast because there's too many ufo uh, you know whatever you gurus out there that if the government come out and said hey we're banding in this they know where it's at it's in the united states they don't have to have dang permission they're gonna go there it's in the yukon's in alaska it's not like you know so once this defrost which is coming up quick which makes it more accessible i'm not saying people's gonna go out there when it's you know 20 degrees or negative 20 whatever what I'm saying is, is there are so many people that's into these speculations. And I say speculations because that's just my opinion. Well, you can call it what you want, even if it's facts. There's enough people that believe in this type of stuff that somebody is going to take it upon their self and go look for this. All right. But he, my only problem with that, though, in reality, they already got it. Maybe. They already well, got it. Well, but that's it. the thing. But there's, so, there's enough evidence out there right now that I think a person could get pretty darn close to where it was shot down at totally yeah and, and so they release that so information. somebody goes out there and say hey i'm here and uh, there's nothing here well now the government's gonna have to give an answer for that see well, that's what i'm oh, saying well that, it's actually funny you say that there was a guy in alaska who went to the crash site and was filming it not a single government official or like government chopper whatever no kind of government vehicles were out there looking for this despite them saying that they were well but you don't know that they had the you know the light where he forgot everything what do you mean men black <laughs> come on man <laughs> you got me man you got me wow maybe you just hit me with the flash <laughs> so, i don't know i mean it's i can't rule it out i mean i would have before any of this happened i would have been like no 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 again because i'm kind of skeptical i'm kind of 50 50 with this and they're, you know, and the thing of it is, there's reporters that be like, hey, is the are these UFOs? And some of the some of the reporters, what they, the answer they got back was, well, we we don't really don't know. We can't rule that out. Well, okay, so like one of the other things I was kind of thinking about too is, you know, if they want to try and call this uh, corporate or private entities, weather balloons or some type of balloon that tracks data for them. My problem with that is that they're at forty thousand feet. That's very uncommon for any kind of a balloon that isn't government operated to be flying at that level because of commercial aircraft or passenger flights, all that stuff that are flying around. So don't try and, and make it out like, oh, it, you know, we'll, we'll never know because it's private individuals. No, I just, man. I think Quit this whole thing, I think this stuff is comical because all on viewpoint. Here's my viewpoint. I release a balloon in the air and I'm talking a balloon like you get, you know, like the size of a car. No, I'm talking about the size of like a basketball. <laughs> and this thing floats out in the freaking ocean and kills a damn turtle. You're going to have all these freaking tree huggers all over your butt because a string killed a turtle. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not making light of it. But now we have one that supposedly debris is strung out seven miles. Where are you all at now? I haven't heard one damn word about it. Well, not one. <laughs> yeah, no, there are turtles true. dying everywhere. Well, and nobody's know, that, doing anything about it. That kind of goes back to. That right, Johnny. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> fact, fact check that yeah. uh, oh, oh there he goes pulling up google no uh that is actually kind of one of my problems with a lot of what goes on nowadays is like so not only can you not be transparent but you're also just gaslighting people like i'm sorry but to get up there when you don't have any real information and to say this is definitely not aliens that is like the most counterproductive argument i've ever heard like if my wife is questioning me about where was i the night before and I say, oh, I wasn't there, but I have no evidence. I'm done. I'm, my goose is cooked. So I'm not even going there with it. Well, I mean, I personally wouldn't want to be in that situation. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. Um, I, no, I understand what you're saying. And, and I mean, I don't know, man. It just depends on all. I think all these things are perspective. But you talk about activists. You know, where are the people like Greta Thunberg? you know, in this East Palestine, Ohio situation, why do they never speak up about the billionaires who drive around these pl private jets as they go to places like Davos and whatever, you know, rather than just trying to focus on climate change? No, do something useful with your voice instead of writing a, a fake book that you're going to make money off of and actually do something to help the people you claim to support. 
That's just, that's my thoughts. I feel really stupid right now. <laughs> there were oh, six turtles wow. that died. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I was wow. looking. And there's actually, I'm, I stand From the corrected. Debris? I stand corrected. There's six turtles that died. So forgive me, people. There's, they're on top of it. Yeah. I was being a smart aleck, but I still am. I'm really hey, not this retracting This is their job. <laughs> I'm this sorry. is their job. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm shocked. I was curious after I said that because I was being a smart aleck. I was like, I'm going to look this up in a little bit. And there's actually some, you know, some, yeah, there's some turtles dying. Um, so maybe there might be dolphins and sharks stuff too. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, Very what's weird. new? But yeah, anyway, I don't know. I mean, I've said this already twice, but it's perspective. So it's angle in which you look at this. I think the government did a pretty good job of leaving this open to speculation, to letting people just let their imagination wander, which I think is a bad a bad thing. It's horrible. In today's world, you can't do that. You know, you can't get on there and say, it's not this, but then give nothing to actually verify that it's not that. That's just not right to, to play with people like that. Yeah. And that's why you know, politicians and the government kind of find themselves in this position of people hating you because we don't know what to trust from you. You told us to get vaccinated. We did look at the problems we're having now. You know, you told us two weeks to stop the spread. That didn't happen. You know, and now we're at this point as a society where you have to accept everyone for who they are, regardless of the potential consequences that it could have on that child. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there's so many issues going on right now that nobody really stops to think about like, oh, they're just pulling our strings here. Well, the problem with this situation in particular, where this one's at for me anyway, and on a serious note, is because, so you have the Chinese spy balloon, and they're saying spy, so the Chinese is spying on us. And then we have the stuff happening in Russia, you know, Ukraine, so you got a war going on here. And then you got the Chinese supposedly spying on us, and you still have all this other stuff coming in. Um, I, there's a level of people in the United States that is, is you know, concerned about a war you know concerned about our national security but are we getting ready to go to war um so there you know there is a concern and, and i say that because it is i think it's a valid concern um whether people understand how these things operate or not it's still a valid concern so i don't think they should be hiding this stuff what, what doesn't matter what it is they should be stating what it is being very transparent on what is happening very clear on what's happening and that and that gives a sense of peace and security to people as well well you know it's funny you kind of talk about this russia ukraine situation i keep seeing it over and over again uh, but it's coming out that back in 2014 the cia was involved in a coup attempt in ukraine to set up a new regime that just so happened to be nazi fascist i'm not surprised that our uh, government's involved in the crap screwed stuff that they did it whenever we were in freaking iraq so, who yeah, the hell do you think was funding these weapons? Our government. Well, and, and yeah, that's just the nasty truth of war is that the people who make the guns and print the money, they're on both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, just as an individual, are you going to see through that uh, or continue to be weaponized into a, a mindless idiot? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not surprised. You know, if I haven't looked into it to, to check up on that, you know, piece of anything, but I wouldn't be surprised. Well, it's it's a happened book. numerous times. There's a book called War is a Racket, and he goes pretty in-depth on the profit side of during wartime versus not in wartime. And so once you just see it from that perspective alone, it makes sense why they always want a, a new war to be fighting you know, or sending money or sending weapons to because of just how much more money they make. They blatantly take advantage of the government, and the government just signs blank checks for these guys, and you know they're all way too rich for any regular person. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're kind of in this environment of, do we just continue to let this happen? Or when are we actually going to come to peace on earth? It's not going to happen. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> too, too much going on there. I mean, things, things have changed, man. It's just, it's where the it aliens is. will got, bring peace. You got trains crashing and aliens coming in and, you know, thank God. I mean, it just, it's where it's at. And turtles dying. It's just, it's just it's where it's at right now. I mean, and the government, you know, is, is progressively, in my opinion, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And I'm sorry, but, you know, I can only say so much from the platform in which I can, you know, but it's everybody's got to, you know, everybody collectively has to stand up against this stuff. It's the only way it's going to stop. And now it's going to continue to get worse if you just let them go un, un, unchecked. Well, as an individual, make sure you understand that even though you might disagree with somebody who's standing in front of you, you can have two completely different opinions, but you can still 
care about each other and treat each other mm-hmm. with respect. And that's where America really needs to define itself is we can have different points of view, different perspectives, but because of the First Amendment, we have that right to be able to say how we feel without worrying about being canceled uh, or taken out of the public square because right. of our ideas. You know, let the good ideas win and the bad ones will fall off. It might take a while, but it eventually happens. And well, that's what I mean, we're seeing now. Yeah, I mean, people don't people don't agree with everything. People don't agree with everything I say, and that's fine. It doesn't bother me. Um, but I still try to hear out the other side, and I don't have to agree with them. And you can, you know, agree to disagree. That's okay. Um, but the problem of it is whenever you have a, say, 25% of America believes a certain thing, 75 believes a certain thing, but the 25% is getting their way, it's not how this works. And yeah, that's a problem. And that's the problem, the minority. And I'm not saying a minority in race, and be clear on that. But the minority in a lot of in, in different things are, you know, getting their voice, you know, heard, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. But they're putting their agendas upon the people who don't want it. And that's the problem. That's, that's the issues that come uh, with a lot of these things is your agendas are fine. I don't care your lifestyle. I don't care. You know, there's a lot of factors you could say in that. The things you do, things you breathe, the things you're around, the things you do. I don't care. But that doesn't mean just because it's right for you. That doesn't mean it's right for me. Secondly, the problem I have with it, with most of it, and I will, this is more of an LGBTQ thing. I don't care that you do that. But you get so pissed when I object it. You know why I get pissed when I you whenever 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 I object it the why you get why they get butt hurt or what I get butt hurt. You can say it either way. I'm gonna tell you why. It's not because you're trying to force your shit on me. It's because you're trying to make my kids do it. That's the problem. Because what you're telling me, and there's a deeper train of thought in this, and hopefully I can communicate this correctly. But you get pissed whenever I object it. But now whenever the role is flipped. It's not okay to do that. It's all of a sudden I'm a homophobe. I, I'm, I'm whatever that comes yeah, a bigot. That. And, and it's not that it's how come I can't, we have to accept or be okay with what you're trying to do or what you're trying to push your agenda, which again, I'll be clear. I whatever. I don't care. But the second we try to push our agenda, whether and even if it's biblical, even if it's the people, the Bible thumpers throwing the Bible out there, even if it's people just saying, no, I don't agree with it because it's wrong, whatever their motive is, why is it now all of a sudden wrong for us to do that? But it's okay for you. See, that's my problem with that subject alone. It's not because of the lifestyle. It's because it's, it's unfair. And, and people would say, yeah, well, life's not fair. You're damn right. It's not, it's not. I, and I understand that, but by the by the constitution by the things that we you know the governing laws the rules you know one we should have that voice and i guess to some degree we do now whenever you get that into politics that's not the case they're catering one side more than the other because they're chicken shits and they're scared of what's going to happen well extremists turn out to vote and that's really what it comes down to on both sides you know your MAGA republicans and your antifa blm people on the left you know they they're the ones who show out to vote uh, so in that, from a political standpoint, that's just who they want to focus on. It mm-hmm. doesn't make it right, and that's kind of the, the problem it's turning into is that now, uh, for whatever reason, a small minority of people is having a dramatic impact on everyone else. And I, I completely agree with you. It's okay for an individual to choose how they want to live their life, but you can't tell me how to raise my kids. In the same way I is, can't tell you how to raise yours. This is not something we're talking about. And, and we, need, we need to jump off this topic because it'll go be another whole other episode. But this is not a topic of, hey, we should be treated, excuse me, a certain way or a certain way. I'm not disputing that. But this crap does not need to be in the schools. And that's why I'm saying that's why, that's why I took a second to come back to that is because that's why I'm talking about our kids. Let, you know, if my kid wants to choose that when they're 18, 19, 20, they can do that. But until they're 18 years old, people and people don't like this. But guess what? I make the decisions. And that's, an, you know, see, that's the problem people don't understand with that. Yeah, that might be with this the homosexual community. Well, that you can't do that. Well, but the problem is that's a big, see, the bigger picture is when parents lose that, then you have these kids 13, 14, 15 years old going in shooting up schools, causing problems in school. You know why? Because the parents are scared to be parents because their rights are getting taken away as parents, so they can't do anything. And what I mean by doing anything is disciplining and doing what I just said is basically I'm the one that calls the shots until you're 18. You're 18 or you graduate high school. 
whenever you don't live under my roof, because I'm going to care if you're 30, if you're my kid. You live under my roof, I still call the shots. That's just how it is. Legally, I don't have that, but there's something legally I can do. Leave. That's what you do. But when that kid is under 18, the parent should have full control. Not abusing them, not beating them, not to, you know, that type of stuff, but they should have that. They should have that say. Yeah, and you should be able to tell your kids, hey, I don't agree with this, and here's why. Mm -hmm. You know, and because if they're allowed to say, I believe in this and here's why, then I should have the same right to be able to say, I don't agree and here's my point. Right. And then as a, your child turns into an adult, they can make that decision for themselves of who they are and what they want to be. But to tell any child that they're stuck in a different body, you know, that's just so bizarre to me that you would try and, and plant that concept or that idea into someone's mind. Yeah. Uh, that more than likely didn't have that truly to begin with. Well, we can always come back to that topic. Uh, I'm just saying that because I think it's a big picture in what we're trying to say. You know, we're scaring our kids not to have a voice. They're so, you know, adults are scared. The kids are going to be scared, you know, to, to speak up against these things. And, and that's what's, you know, we demand answers in, in the, whether it's a balloon or, or a UFO, we demand answers, you know, that the whole thing with the, uh, trains derailing there's there's we demand answer we we should have some answers on this we should be they should be very clear on what happened um if not um find something that will you know be very clear on it um same thing with these other issues they should be telling us exactly what's going on hold them accountable exactly so uh with that you know thank you guys so much for watching and listening again uh, you know, if you don't mind, just drop a, a comment, subscribe to our page, let us know what you think. You know, if you have some ideas for the show, slide in my DMs, tell me what you want to know uh, or what you would like to hear. But other than that, thank you guys so much and have a great night.